Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video we'll be playing around with this Apollo BTC miner. Now this is my small insignificant chance at getting a Bitcoin block, um, but there is some improvements that we can do to overclock this thing, and that is to give it its own direct dedicated power, which we have done with a 1200 watt power supply. The stock power supply doesn't give you much juice, only gives you about 200 watts, and you can run it on balance mode or lower power mode but I wanna see what we can actually overclock this thing to. Right now on balance mode, we're only doing about 2.5 terahash, somewhere in the region is about the average, uh, 2.43, 2.5, somewhere in there is the 24 hour average at 154 watts. So I know there's some more in it and it will warn you when you go to overclock, uh, you know, to be careful and make sure it's on a dedicated power supply because the stock one will not be able to handle it. Now. Thermally, we're sitting around 62 degrees Celsius with the air ambient temperature being around 78. So we want to compare like for like. So I'm going to have to time it out to be at the same day. But let's switch over to the main computer and go through what it takes to overclock this thing. Everything's built right here in the GUI. Makes your life very easy. And see what the thermals, power draw, and hash rate can get up to for this guy. All right, so we're on the computer, and just to go over again, uh, we're sitting around 2.5-ish terahash at 154 watts. Uh, this device has 44 different ASICs, or little chips. Um, it's running at a high 7.93 volts, uh, but again, I don't know the actual architecture or specific device. We haven't tore down into it. Maybe we'll do that in a later video. 154 watts, fan speeds only at 3,400 um, RPM. And temperature is anywhere from 61 to 62. We're going to try to keep the thermals uh, or the ambient air temperature the same while we're doing this because I want to see what the thermals get up to. And then again, in the future, we might do a teardown to see what we can improve the thermals to. To overclock this particular guy, uh, very simple. You just go to settings. Uh, the FutureBit team did a really good job of, of kind of compiling this uh, little GUI here. Uh, we got eco mode, we got balance mode, and we got turbo mode. So just to let you know, you could run turbo mode with your stock power supply, the 200 watt power supply that comes with the unit. Um, but uh, it's either going to range anywhere from 2 terahash to 3.8 terahash, depending on where you are. Right now, again, we're, uh, we are on balanced. Um, and then it could be anywhere from 125 watts to 200 watts, obviously. But now that we have a server power supply or upgraded power supply, we're not on the stock one, we could probably go beyond that. But I have a feeling we're going to be hitting a thermal headroom before we hit our power headroom. But that's the whole point of this because I want to find out what actually happens. Now, FutureBit warns you that the Apollo comes tuned with these preset values, Eco, Balance, and Turbo. Anything above that, um, that good operating range, you ultimately take on risk, right? If you try to mess up with mess with anything and you mess it up by overclocking or overvolting, it is 100% your fault. Don't expect them to come save the day. Uh, when we click this parameter here, uh, which is the danger zone, danger zone. Um, sorry about that. Uh, we got 40%, 50%, 60%, 70, all the way up to max, which I'm assuming is 100%. Anyways, uh, we can play around with the frequency. So what I would probably do is let's try 60 first and maybe 39 or 50 and 39. See where that settles. Is it higher, lower than where we are now? And then bump it up. Now, every time you do this, you're going to have to save and restart in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, give it a few to kind of get settled in, into its, uh, its clock settings and thermals and then make your adjustments based on that. But let's just go ahead and run this and see where that puts us compared to, again, the current 2.5 terahash at 154 watts. So it honestly didn't take long for the device to actually settle back in. Um, it's ranging anywhere from 2.17 terahash down to 2.08 at 124 watts, kind of sitting around the eco preset. Uh, our temperatures dropped about one to two degrees, uh, not too much, but more importantly, the fan speed dropped drastically, only a, almost a thousand rpm which is obviously going to improve noise output so if you're really trying to minimize noise in your area uh, going eco would be the way to go uh, and i want to go ahead and step it up now i did find the frequency it was down here at the bottom i am don't recall looking at what the balance uh presets has but right now we're on 39 megahertz 
on our 44 active little chips. So let's go ahead and put balance back on. And then we're going to step it back up one more notch. We'll probably jump up to 70 and 46 and see where that puts us. But let me put balance back on and see what the frequency was there. Unfortunately, it just doesn't show it when you use any of the presets. It just says auto, auto, auto. Whereas when we do the manual tuning, um, so we're just going to have to find it manually and see where that, ba uh, that balance section sits. So let's try 70 and 46. So that appears to have settled in at uh, 2.87 terahash at 184 watts. And our voltage jumped up to 8.08. Uh, our error rate's also increasing. So as we increase our power and our frequency, um, obviously there's going to be some balancing that needs to be done there. Uh, the frequency is at 46 megahertz, power at 70, and fan is on auto still, but we can boost that up as well in settings. But 2.8 terahash at 184 watts, uh, we can see why this particular little guy becomes a little bit less efficient as we go beyond. Um, and then the fan, we could turn on manual. Temperature to start the fan, 40 degrees Celsius. And then temperature for max fan speed. So auto was doing a good job by itself. And the, the cooler, we haven't tore down uh, the, the device yet, but the cooler kind of reminds me of like a bigger stock Intel cooler with a completely different like fin stack and setup um, or like a stock AMD cooler. So be interesting to uh, see if, you know, if you took it apart, what would happen? Okay, so min min doesn't do anything. So we'll just go one tick up because I really want it 100% right now. Save. Give that a second to kick in. And so we're climbing up 65, 66 degrees for 2.8 terahash, 184. Now look, we went from 2.8, uh, four terahash up to 2.91. If we can keep this guy cool, I wonder if it could sustain that 2.9 terahash at 184 watts. So we already broke 3,700 RPM. I wonder. I don't know what the max is, but I would assume maybe 38 might be the absolute max that this particular fan can do maybe replacing the fan would uh improve it but then obviously you're gonna have to sacrifice noise so if you're one that cares about noise uh rather than performance you're gonna have to find that balancing act but it doesn't get too terribly loud compared to other asics devices that i've, I've seen uh, but that's where we're sitting right now so 3700 rpm 66 degrees celsius 2.8 terahash at 184 watts let's see what the max can do now here's a warning from Futurebit. Uh, this obviously exceeds the AP200 power supply that's provided to you, um, which is limited 75% power. Going beyond this will cause your system to shut down. And you accept, because we gotta agree here, I have read and accept, um, that um, you know Futurebit will not cover any warranty claims past 75% power and that you are using two ATX, or excuse me, an external power supply with two six pin connectors uh, capable of at least 300 watts so 300 watts is the max this device probably is rated to to pull um and you got to agree and once we do this future bit will no longer warranty your particular device um and let's see what happens so we're gonna go let's try 90 percent um and i don't want to go max yet let's try 58 yeah so 60 is the max frequency and power is you know anywhere from I would guess maybe 30, 20, 30 percent, all the way up to 100 percent. Uh, and then we got the fan. Let's see here. Temperature for max fan speed. The temperature needed to be needed to set the fan at maximum speed. I want to keep that low uh, and leave everything else alone. So let's save and start that. I'm going to go ahead and go back into settings and set the power up to max because you can see the hardware errors jumped up to 45 percent. So that means it's not getting enough juice for this frequency. So let's go ahead and set that and let that get settled in before I bring you guys back and see what that actually ends up being. But we're only at 50, we're staying at 58 on the frequency, maxing out the power so we can reduce those hardware errors. And it looks like we settled in at 4.8% hardware errors, no rejected shares yet, but you see this bar fluctuating between green and yellow. 5% is obviously not good or caution. Red is bad, green is good. Uh, we're sitting around 245 watts at 3.4 ish terahash uh, so again not very efficient as far as watts per terahash um, it looks like our temperature settled in around 71 degrees celsius with the same ambient air 
and our fan can go above 4,000 RPM. It's actually hitting 4,800 RPM right now, uh, and it's very interesting. We have it. We're, we're I have it set for 100, but it still says 95% uh, minor power. So even though in settings I have it max, so max is not 100%. It's 95, and then max uh, overclock is obviously going to be 60%. The highest that the website says is 3.8. So could we hit that? that 3.8 terahash with the only two extra frequency let's find out so we are hitting that theoretical 3.8 terahash at 263 ish watts our hardware errors are down below four or five percent so it is possible to do it however because i am in a hot humid climate in florida leaving this thing running 24 7 at 75 degrees is not comfortable it looks like the fan rpm is 4800 max um and our voltage is 8.5 volts is is the highest that i could actually do for this particular hash board or device now i'm interested because in the top left here you'll see two different numbers as far as temperatures so one is 60 degrees and one is 75 degrees so i'm wondering if one is maybe inlet temperature and then one is outlet temperature or the temperature in the the, the actual chip itself i'm not entirely sure uh, but because the difference is almost 15 degrees Celsius, I'm wondering if one is like at the intake and one is on the chip itself. So we can overclock and push this thing to the maximum reported on the website, which is what I wanted to validate. But let's have a listen and hear what that sounds like, especially if you have it plugged into a server power supply like the 1200, uh, what is it, DPS power supply from HP. So most of the sound you're going to be hearing is actually going to be from the server power supply with this device running at full steam, plus the extra two miners. But here is the Futurebit Apollo miner at 100% max overclock. Here it is about five feet away, four feet away. And here's the server power supply. Not terrible compared to other ASICs that I've seen. So this device is settled in. Um, it, the hash rate is fluctuating anywhere from 3.8 uh, down to 3.6, 3.5, sitting on 263 watts, not very efficient whatsoever but the error rate is low and we're still processing transactions. And you can get this device through Futurebit um, and the full node one or the full package, which comes with the Bitcoin node as well as the miner, is a bit costly, uh, but you can process your Bitcoin transactions and everything through your own node, which I'll show you in a future video. And the standard edition, um, you can hook up two standard editions to the full node if you want to do that. And that's why, you know, even though it's a very very small chance that one would hit a bitcoin block with a device such as this it is still a chance that's why you see people using usb miners or multiple usb miners the moon lander so on and so forth because uh with the bitcoin having in common uh anybody everybody is trying to at least have a chance to get at least one bitcoin in their wallet because it's just gonna become more and more rare as the asset becomes more and more scarce but that is the overclocking of the future bit apollo let me know your thoughts down in the comments below um and do me a favor on the way out hit the like button make sure to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description that will support the channel and what we do here and you just have yourself a wonderful day take care i'll catch you in the next one